Yo, what's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? You know what time it is, man. We're back here with another Top 10 reaction. We're going to be checking out Top 10 Cults in History, scarier than the Manson Family. And I did a video reaction not too long about long ago about Leslie Van Hooten. And she was one of the family members of the Manson family that committed some stuff. She was recently released. So I talked about the cults a little bit. I don't understand the thinking that goes behind people, I guess, that become a part of this group. But somebody mentioned very good details in that uh, comment section of that video. So if you want to go tap into their comments, see what they're talking about, they really kind of break it down on what persuasion the cult leaders have and, and kind of the weaknesses of those who follow them. So let's go ahead and get into this one, though. All right, today we're entering into the disturbing world of cults. Gotta say, for how notorious the Manson family is, they look like a daycare compared to most of the groups on this list. I, I'd heard of some of these before, but uh, yeah, man, some of these really shocked me. Which one of the cults on this list disturbed you the most? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host, James, and these are the top 10 cults in history, scarier than the Manson family. And uh, we're kicking off this list with Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate was a group led by Marshall Applewhite, who believed that his members could transcend their physical form, reaching a higher level of existence in outer space, which he referred to as going to the next level. Towards the end, the group had rented a mansion in Rancho Santa Fe that they all lived in. And when the time finally came, ingested phenobarbital mixed with applesauce and uh, downed it with vodka in an attempt to rid themselves of their physical form and board a spaceship that would take them to this next plane of existence. All 38 of them died along with Applewhite. I've always had mm. this very dark fascination with this group. I find this one incredibly unsettling. In you know, all cults are unsettling, but there's an availability of footage for Heaven's Gate that makes it feel, uh, I guess, more real, I suppose. You can watch Marshall Applewhite's initiation tape on YouTube, you can also watch testimonials of several members on video before they took their own lives. And wow. what's so unsettling about this whole situation is how normal uh, they all seem. Not Definitely not Applewhite, but the followers. They're, they're talking like they're about to graduate from college or something. Look at Charles Manson in interviews, and he's doing all the, you know, that... Oh, yeah, like he looks yeah. like, he seems like he's from another Completely. planet, right? But then the Heaven's Gate members, they don't sound like people who are out of their minds. It shows just how easy it is to get wrapped up in things like this and that these are real people who go through these kinds of things. You know, they're lonely, they're seeking some kind of community, something bigger than themselves. It's uh, it's sad. It's sad, really. Number nine. That's what I was thinking, that, that these kind of people probably are seeking attention, approval, some kind of connection. But really, I don't think you can put cult members in a box, man, because I think if you look through all of their stories, um, all of their history, they're going to be all different, right? Of course, you're going to have those kind of people, but you're going to have successful people, people that didn't need other people's approval, people that didn't need friends, people that didn't need money. And they had everything and they still found. I, I just don't think you can simply put people in a box anymore and say, this is the type of people that do this. It's just not that simple. But Heaven's Gate, I didn't know that there was footage of initiations and stuff like that um so if you guys ever want me to check that out let me know in the comment sections maybe we can check it out together here we go the family and hamilton byron was the leader of the family a new age cult the established family. in 1963 no. in australia she claimed to be the reincarnation of jesus christ the cult practiced a blend of new age spirituality Christianity and Eastern mysticism. The family adopted 28 children who were raised within the cult and subjected to horrible mistreatment. Hamilton believed that there was going to be an apocalypse and was attempting to form a master race that would rule the world. They all had their hair dyed blonde, they all wore identical clothing, and she claimed that she was the biological mother of all of them and that the other adult members, they were referred to as uh, their aunties or uncles. Authorities carried out a raid in 1987 and the children were thankfully rescued from the premises. The Ripper Crew. That's the thing that's horrible about these cults, man, is when it comes to adults, you can do what you want, right? If you want to fall foolishly for this stuff and you want to drink the Kool-Aid, man, do you, right? You're an adult, you can make your own decisions and I can only feel so bad for those decisions that you make. It's when they bring the kids and they involve the kids, man. Most of these kids are mistreated, abused in the most gross ways imaginable. That is the worst part, man. These kids have no choice and their protectors, the people that they chose, that, that they didn't choose, that they were born into um, the family and they trust you and, and you are supposed to be the one that, you know, 
protects this child, you bring him straight to harm's way, man. That's the worst casualty in all of this, and it, truly. The Ripper crew definitely feels more like a gang of psychotic criminals than a cult, but they did perform ritualistic ceremonies. They operated in Chicago in the early 80s, composed of four members, led by Robin Gett, who referred to himself as a Satanist, Edward Spritzer, Andrew Coco Raleys, and his brother Thomas. The gang engaged in a series of very heinous crimes. Their primary focus was kidnapping, torturing, and unaliving young women. They targeted vulnerable Whoa. individuals and would mutilate their victims, even eating parts of their body and satanic ceremonies afterwards. The members referred to themselves as the Rippers due to their imitation of the notorious criminal Jack the wow. Ripper. Eventually, the authorities arrested the members of the crew, leading to their convictions and imprisonment. One member was released from prison in 2019, though. Thomas, who really? had been quoted saying that everyone thinks I'm a monster, but I'm not a monster. Next, we have the Order of so when you hear about a group like that, I'd tell you what, the Rippers, man, they make Heaven's Gate not seem so bad, right? At least Heaven's Gate, I don't know, I can't say definitively because I don't know their full story, but let's assume that they're just taking out themselves. Well, you're just taking out yourself, right? It's when you're harming other people and you're unaliving other people, man, that, uh... I'm sure we'd all rather have Heaven's Gate around in, in that scenario. The Solar Temple. The Order of the Solar Temple was a secretive religious cult founded in 1984 by Luke Jore and Joseph DeMambro. The cult blended elements of Christianity, New Age philosophy, occultism. Members believed in a combination of conspiracy theories and the impending end of the world that was supposedly going to take place at some point in the mid-90s. The Order of the Solar Temple gained uh, some attention due to a series of mass self-inflicted deaths committed by its followers. In 1994, the leaders told their members that they needed to transcend their physical forms to begin their new lives in the afterlife. 53 members, including Jure and Membro, took their own lives at various locations across Switzerland. They were found dead by authorities after remote control devices had ignited fires at these various locations. Dang. In the following years, similar incidents occurred in other locations in France and Canada. All right, this next mm. one is nuts. The Branch Davidians. Uh, this one is mostly remembered for the massive siege that took place, leading to the deaths of several members as well as several government agents who yeah. were raiding the compound. The Branch Davidians were a religious cult led by David Korish. The group established a compound near Waco, Texas, known as Mount Carmel Center. The Branch Davidians held apocalyptic beliefs and considered Korish to be a kind of messiah of sorts. In February of 1993, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or the ATF, launched a raid on the compound based on suspicions of illegal firearms being held there. The raid resulted in a shootout, leading to the deaths of four ATF agents and six of the Branch Davidians. 51-day standoff then ensued, and during which negotiations failed to kind of resolve the situation. And on April 19th, 1993, the FBI initiated a tear gas assault on the compound in an attempt to force Branch Davidians out. However, a fire broke out within the compound, resulting in the deaths of 76 people, including Jeez, Korish. The exact cause of the fire remains to be a bit of a mystery. Some argue it was intentionally set by by the Branch Davidians and others think it was caused by the FBI's actions. Yeah. Number five. I, I think they made a TV show on that. I, I could have sworn my wife watched a TV show, maybe on Netflix or something about that. But that's the one that happened in Waco. I got to tell you what, I went to Waco about two plus years ago and uh, totally forgot that happened there. So what did I do? I actually went and checked out the Dr. Pepper Museum and I checked out uh, the Magnolia House or something. But dang, if I would have remembered, I would have went and checked out that place because I think you can actually go out there, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you can actually go see that spot. NXIVM. NXIVM was really a cult mass like a, a quote thing, unquote uh, self help organization. It was founded by Keith Ranieri in 1998. It was marketed as a personal development program attracting wealthy members, including celebrities and CEOs. But beneath its facade, the organization engaged in manipulative practices and illegal activities. Ranieri established a hierarchical structure within NXIVM with himself at the top 
course. Not only was it a pyramid scheme, but Ranieri used manipulative tactics to control and exploit his female followers in even worse ways. The group was accused of branding its members with a symbol that represented his initials and engaging in sexual exploitation. Ranieri had actress Alison Mack lead a subgroup within NXIVM called DOS, which was supposedly a group created to empower women, but actually functioned to recruit women as slaves, who yeah. Ranieri would blackmail in order to remain subservient. In 2017, investigative journalists began exposing the dark side of the group, leading to the arrest and the conviction of Keith Ranieri and several high-ranking members in 2018. The movement for the restoration of the I remember that uh I don't know so what are your guys feelings on people that okay grown-ups when you're harming people when you're actually like unaliving people or harming children I think full extent of the law needs to be brought down on you when it's adults with other adults making stupid decisions even if they choose to unalive themselves like, to what extent do you just assume people need to take responsibility for their own actions, okay? You're an adult, and you're somehow being manipulated, I guess is is the word. You're being manipulated to following these things and making these terrible decisions. Blackmail is a totally different thing. But when you're making these decisions, and then you get caught, and, and a full investigation happens, and then you say, well, I was actually manipulated into these decisions... I just feel like, man, there's a certain point to where you just need people to take responsibility for what the heck they've done. 18. The movement for the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. The MRTCG was a religious cult based in Uganda. The cult was founded in the late in 1989 by Credonia Merende and Joseph Kubiteri. I'm probably really messing up those names, but they claim to have received messages from the Virgin Mary herself. The cult emphasized strict adherence to the Ten Commandments. They gained a significant following and its leaders predicted an apocalyptic event to occur on December 31st, 1999. However, when this prophesized doomsday did not actually take place, tensions within the group began to escalate. The leaders now said March 17th, 2000 would be the new day and that it would be reined in with this massive celebration. Hundreds of members attended at a church, but almost as as soon as the celebration began, a massive fire was set off. The doors and windows to the church had been boarded up in advance, and an estimated 530 members died oh. in the inferno. There was also a series of coordinated mass attacks that took place at various other cult compounds. The exact number of victims remains a bit unclear. Estimates range from several hundred to over a thousand, though, and the bodies wow. of the five principal leaders were never found, and it's thought that they may have just escaped number three dude I, I haven't ever heard about that so they murdered all these people and murder not only in that manner but they got away with it the bodies of those five leaders were never found like dang Never heard of that. That that's wild. Number three, Am Shinriko. Am Shinrikyo was a Japanese cult founded by Shoko Asahara in 1984. The cult gained worldwide attention when it carried out a series of deadly attacks in the 1990s. Asahara claimed to be a spiritual leader and preached a mix of Buddhism and, and some other religions, blending them with his own apocalyptic visions. The cult had thousands of followers in Japan and aimed to overthrow the government and establish this new world order, kind of. In 1995, wow. Am Shinrikyo orchestrated the Tokyo subway siren gas attack, where several of his members released sarin, a deadly nerve agent on five different different subway trains across the city, which resulted in the deaths of 13 people and injured thousands. Following the subway attack, the Japanese authorities cracked down on the group and Asahara and other members were arrested and the cult was banned in 1996. Asahara and several other cult members were later convicted and sentenced to death for their involvement in the attacks. And number two, we have- Makes sense, makes sense, man. I'm surprised they only killed 13 people with that gas attack when he said they did this nerve gas attack on multiple subs i, I thought we were going to be seeing a 
quite a, quite a lot more deaths than that. 13 and they got him, so. The Ant Hill Kids. The Ant Hill Kids were formed by Rock Terrio in 1977 in St. Marie, Quebec. He claimed to be a prophet who had received a message from God that the world would end in February of 1979. Began growing a following and convinced everyone to leave their jobs, their homes, and just cut off all contact with their families to join him on this commune by a mountainside, which he referred to as Eternal Mountain. He had everyone build the town while he just sat back and watched uh, and he gave them the group the name the Ant Hill Kids as he thought they worked like a group of ants. Now in 1979 as we all know the world uh, didn't end so people started to question him and he was like oh, it's, you know, God's time works differently up there it's uh, it's different than it is here and we, we got our lines crossed don't worry it, it'll happen. And while all this was going on Rock was growing increasingly more violent and controlling he ended up impregnating all the women fathering about 20 children he would also perform drunken operations on some of his members in order to prove he had the power to heal them. This led to him being in prison for two years, but once he got out, he was right back to it and ended up taking what? the life of one of his wives in one of these insane surgeries. He also nearly took the life of another one of his wives, having attacked her with an axe. She miraculously managed to escape though, and uh, Rock was finally arrested and sentenced to life in prison, where another inmate fortunately got rid of him. And finally, we have- Man! God, this channel, this channel, man, watching some of these, man, I just don't get it. And that's one that just boom. Why is it always the end of the world? Why is that so compelling to get everyone to run in and give you their money and bow down and say, whatever you want me to build a house for you, I'll work like an ant. I mean, dude, you say the end of the world's coming. I know the date. Trust me. I am the shepherd, man. Everybody's coming in droves, man. You've got a cult at that point. It seems, and they never think back to, Hey, hold on. Wasn't there like 50 other cult leaders that said the world was going to end? And didn't that go bad? But no, no, you're the right guy. You're the one that I could trust, man. It's wild. Wild. The People's Temple. Yes, the Jim Jones cult. Jim Jones founded the People's Temple in 1954 in Indianapolis. By 1974, Jones had started getting some bad press, to say the least. Things were coming out about how badly he treated the members, and a lot went on. Like, way more than I'd be able to discuss in a top 10 list like this, but in an attempt to escape the evils of media scrutiny, Jones convinced about a thousand of his members to move to Guyana, where he claimed he was going to create this utopia in society, completely cut off from the prying eyes of the outside world. He rented a plot of land, named it the uh, People's Temple Agricultural Project, but it was just referred to as Jonestown usually. And Jonestown was anything but a utopia. Members were not allowed to leave and were punished violently for going against Jones's word. It was a full-on dictatorship, kind of ironic given his political leanings. In 1978, a politician by the name of Leo Ryan was investigating the People's Temple. Came to Jonestown where several members secretly told him that they wanted out. The group made their way to a plane, they were gunned down by some of Jones' security, and later Crazy. that day, Jones convinced his remaining followers to drink a concoction of grape-flavored flavorade laced with cyanide. Some didn't want to drink it and were forcibly injected. In the end, 918 people lost their lives. Oh, all that said, I've been your host, James. I'd like to assume that that was going to be the worst cult tragedy of all time, forever and ever. But let's be real, guys. Do you think we've yet to see it? And once we see that one, we've still yet to see it. And there will be another. And there is just always more, man. Uh, I I don't know. Will we see another large happening like this in my lifetime? I guess only time will tell. But I'll tell you what. The world just keeps populating. We keep getting bigger. And that means there's going to be more people who are going to be susceptible to this kind of manipulation, right? All right. Well, it is what it is, man. Let me know. If, uh, I, I won't say if you ran a cold, if I ran a cold, I don't know, man. I, I think we just find cool things to do. Let's, uh, learn how to skateboard, play guitar, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. I, I don't want to be farming. So if anyone's got farming skills, man, you can be raising the pro produce for us. All right. All right, man. That's it for me. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget, like, subscribe, let me know, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Peace.